All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBC Light Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks with gold trim, hailing from Kyoto, Japan. He weighed in at 48.8 kilos or 107 and three quarter US pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 15 wins, no losses. Eight wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making the sixth defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated reigning and defending WBC Light Flyweight Champion of the World, introducing the amazing boy, Ken Shiro. And his opponent across the ring, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing red trunks with gold trim, joining us from Manila in the Philippines. He weighed in at 48.9 kilos or 108 pounds even. With a record of 28 wins, three losses and one draw. He has 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his first attempt at a world title, please welcome the challenger and the hard-hitting WBC number one ranked contender, introducing Jonathan Lightning Takoni. And once again, here's our referee in charge now to give instructions, Frank Garza. Pageantry and traditions of pro fights in Japan. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. His trunks are right where they should be. Nothing, up, nothing below here, all up here. His is just a little bit high. I'm just going to give you right up here, okay? Touch him up and come on up the bell. May the best man win. Five foot two is Jonathan Taconin. Give me the best chance for him against Shiro. Best, best chance to get Shiro? You know what? He's been out of the ring for 293 days. You know, he has punching power. He has a puncher's chance. That's just it. I mean, Ken Shiro, he, he's a good boxer. He's a technical fighter. He fights off his jab, has a good right hand, and he digs well to the body. Here we go, round number one, WBC 108-pound championship. Orthodox Shiro, Southpaw Filipino. How many times do we say that? Southpaw Filipino of Jonathan Taconing, who began boxing at age 14, and as so many Filipinos of his generation will tell you, was inspired to turn pro when he watched what Manny Pacquiao did early in his career. This was a guy who was fighting in quote, unquote, amateur bouts where fighters over in the Philippines were being paid $12 to fight three round fights. Uh, so many overcoming abject poverty in their upbringing, but then inspired to become a full pro after he saw Manny Pacquiao defeat 3K Battery in December of 2004. That was, of course, one of the breakthrough moments in the career of Pac-Man, trying to get to the inside now. So to your question earlier, Tukunin is going to have to He's going to have to be better than he's been in his previous fights. I understand the layoff, but he's going to have to press Shiro because if you allow Shiro to get comfortable and establish a jab, which is probably his best punch, he can box you for 10 years straight. You can't, Takuna cannot allow that. He has to do exactly what he's doing right now, press the action with Shiro and make him fight faster than he likes to fight. Takuna getting to the inside. They're able to land a body punch, but you see that snapping jab from Shiro right back at him. You may have some issues like layoffs or maybe your last fight you took a loss, but when you're in the ring, Tim, and you know this, you gotta, you gotta compartmentalize that, put that behind you and go to work. Yeah, but the long layoff, I just worry about you know, Taconing getting hit early, early in the fight. You know, you don't, when, you, when you don't get hit as often, been off for 293 days, you know, it almost seems like your, your chin gets a little bit of weak, weakened because you haven't been having contact, you know, especially with eight ounce gloves on. So that's my worry, and that's my concern with Taconi. 
early on, maybe the first four rounds, I should say. Good uppercut for Shiro a few minutes ago, a few, few moments ago, excuse me. Shiro's gonna have a lot of opportunities. Coney, he's a straightforward fighter. You know, he's aggressive. You know, he's just looking to get inside your kitchen, get down to the body. But he leaves himself open a lot of the times. So far in this first round, she was very composed, even though Takunin pressed him in several spots and even landed some good shots. Good composure mm. from Shiro in this first round. Mm. Shiro and Takunin, end of one in their title fight. Everyone at school has the glittery one. Of course, she wants that one. And she wants the one with the doodads. No one has the one with doodads yet. But did you check eBay? For the glittery one and the one with doodads, eBay. I did not have to put anything down. Not a cent. I had absolutely no out-of-pocket costs. If you don't win, we don't win. If I don't win, you don't win. What does that mean? It was like, well, if you don't win, you don't pay us anything. There is no fee unless we won the case. One call, that's all. Make this your Mustang summer at Pottawatomie. Wednesday nights this July, you can win free play or one of four 2019 Ford Mustangs. Only at Pottawatomie. It's nice to win a bunch of safety awards, but it's even better to protect the ones we love. Better is only better when it puts people first. Undefeated champion Ken Shiro in the white trunks was effective with the jab in that first round. He threw out 32, landing five, and just the fact that he put out 32, mm -hmm. that's the schedule he wants to stay on. Absolutely, he wants to control range outside and catch to Conan as he tries to get inside. He's gonna have a lot of opportunities to land power shots. There's Taconing on the inside, was able to touch him to the body, and then comes up top with the right hand. Good exchange as he's able to step forward to Shiro. Tess, Shiro has to be careful. He got caught with some big shots, some looping shots, pulling straight back. You know, the pressure of Taconing right now is having some, some effect on him. Well, that's the pressure I was from sorry, sorry, Joe. minded Filipino. That's the pressure I was talking about in the first round that Takuning needs to continue to apply to Shiro like he's doing right now. He can't allow Shiro to be comfortable. He has to make him uncomfortable early like he's doing right now, continue to press the pace and punch in between the jabs and the, and the individual shots of Shiro. But he does keep getting hit, and I'm talking about Kunin with the lead uppercut yes. from Shiro. He's got to be careful with that because that punch is landing flush at the moment. The Koning's putting a lot of pressure on Shiro. And Shiro's not investing in the body early right now. He's head hunting. He needs to invest in the body to slow down those legs and take some of the steam off the punches of Takoni. And he hasn't invested yet. Uh, there's one right there. As he caught him opening up and he sent that right hand to the body. It's a very active, good looking second round here. Now popping that job and goes with the right uppercut. Comes back with a right cross. Wide swinging was to Koning that time. Round number two here, WBC 108 pound world championship. Filipino trying to find those moments to press the action against the sharp boxing undefeated Ken Shiro. I think Shiro landed that body shot on accident a few moments ago. <laughs> That's just not who he is. He's a headhunter. He wants to knock out or he wants to just box you all night long. But body punching is not really in his repertoire. Well, he's going to need it tonight because he's going to have to keep, keep the combing off of him. And that's one way to slow down a guy that pressures. And Shiro has a beautiful jab. I mentioned that earlier. That's probably his best punch. He's got to work that left hand, that lead hand, over time to slow down the hard pressing to Koenig. The problem is he pulls back, and I'm talking about Kid Shiro, he pulls back with his hands down at times, trying to get away, and he gets clipped. You know what Takumi's doing, he's following him out as he pulls back with the looping shot.
this Saturday night. The homecoming fight for Newark's Shakur Stevenson. The featherweight phenom headlines a primetime night on ESPN. The complete pack. You see a kid's smile, a man's strength. Then on Friday, July 19th, a golden opportunity for Tiafimo Lopez, the most destructive force in boxing. Tiafimo Lopez, showstopper. It's an IBF lightweight eliminator, July 19th on ESPN+. Plus. That's Shakur Stevenson fight coming your way Saturday night, 10.30 Eastern on ESPN. This is the moment that he was promised. Back in April, of course, he was able to dismiss Diaz at Madison Square Garden. And everybody said, it is time. Headline your own show back in your town as Stevenson is on a collision course for a world title. One of the best looking featherweights around. And he will be in action against Guevara. Round number three here from Osaka of Ken Shiro and Jonathan Takani. Shakur Stevenson, the pressure of fighting in your hometown can be unique. Dre, you experienced that early in your career. It's a different kind of pressure, but it's a pressure. It's a necessary evil. You got to learn how to shoulder that weight if you're going to move on to bigger and better things like a world title shot in the near future. Start of round number three here. An interesting second round. As we saw Taconing time and again trying to press the action. Shiro was able to land a very effective body punch. Shiro, what he's doing is he's trying to use the aggressiveness of Takoni. He's trying to use it against him. What he's trying to do is he's trying to allow him to come forward. He's using the jab and he's trying to pick him off before he gets inside. And you see Takoni, his game plan is to get inside, land hard shots to the body and get the young fella to pull out and catch him with a big shot over the top. Right hand, and now an offensive surge from the champion. Now effective with the one-two. A lead right hand. You can see Shiro having success picking these spots. And that right uppercut right there from Shiro it's going to be available for him because the Coney, he's leaning forward. You see him leaning over the front knee. You cannot do that being a prize fighter. You lean, that, lean over your front knee, you're going to expect the uppercut to come and hit you. Well, the right hand comes in from Ken Shiro. Yeah, Shiro's landed that uppercut. Well, the heads came together right there. As you saw, the clash of heads and the veteran American referee, Frank Garza, is going to take time to see if we have blood here. And you can see that there is a cut as the heads came together and the ringside physician is up to take a peek at the title challenger to Koning. As we'll see if we can get a closer look at this. He's working on that left brow, but you saw the heads come together is often the case here yep. between Southpaw and Orthodox Fighter. That is the case. Both power punches are lined up on the same side. That's the reason why the head clashes. So an accidental clash, and you can see that gash is coming diagonally across the right brow, right to the center of the bridge of the nose. Yeah, that's a bad cut. Yes, it is. Well, the concern with that position of the cut is where the blood is going to go. That cut's coming, gonna come straight down and potentially impact the eye. And impede the vision. It really will. Of Tacconi. So we'll see if his camp can do a good enough job to deal with that. He is Johnny Alorde working the, the corner as the cut man. Of course, a prominent boxing family in the Philippines. Yeah, right now, he's getting the, the cut medicine. The anticoagulant right now ready in the corner. That's what he's doing. Yes, he is. But I like the response from Takunin. He's not 
taking a backward step. You hear people talk about that all the time. Takuning is living that out. He's pressing Shiro right now. And for a veteran fighter facing a younger, more crisper fighter, you're going to lose the early part of the rounds for the most part. It's the back half right. of this 12-rounder right. that Takuning is banking on. See him wiping at that brow every so often with that right glove. There's a right hand that comes in from Shiro. Needs to be just a little tighter on the inside as that time Shakira went straight back and a left hand followed him. Been a very good pace set early on here between these two. End of three. One beard, one blade, in one go. One blade is all you need. Shape or shave any length. Be your best you. Innovation and you. Phillips Norelco. Injured? You need a team you can trust. Call Gruber Law Offices today. Serving the people of Wisconsin for over 30 years. Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of Wisconsin Badger Athletics. One call, that's all. I had a ruptured disc in my neck. I needed to get it fixed. Life immediately following the procedure was better. I have three young boys, I coach their sports. I play their sports with them. So just the enjoying life came back. The pain was gone. The entire standard of life became better. Make this your Mustang summer at Pottawatomie. Wednesday nights this July, you can win free play or one of four 2019 Ford Mustangs. Only at Pottawatomie. Round number four of our world title fight from Osaka, Japan. As Ken Shiro is looking to defend his title and stay perfect here against Jonathan Takoning, a very game and active title challenger. Shiro fighting in Osaka as a world champion, very popular star in Japan. Short right hand on the inside from the champ. Break, break. I talked about Takoni wanting to extend this fight to the latter part of the 12 rounds, but if he keeps getting hit with flush shots like that, Takoni may not be around for the latter part of this 12 round. Let's see how, oh, it's a good shot. Shiro hits him with a short right hand, and Takoni is hurt badly. He timed that perfectly. He's hurt, Tess. He doesn't. That's it. It's over. Ken Shiro defends his title in style. Impressive stuff from the WBC Junior Flyweight World Champion. You know, to Conan, that last shot that hit flush right on the chin, and he goes down. You got to understand that you don't remember that punch. You don't even understand how you were hit. I mean, it's instant nervous system shock, you know, that sends waves through your brain, through your whole body, and you have no clue how you ended up on the floor. You just know that you got to pick yourself up. Yeah, to Conan just got hit with is. too many flush shots. Yeah. You know, early in the fight, he didn't make any adjustments. He just kept his head on a platter. He kept his, his, his head over his feet. And for a guy who's master defense like Ken Shiro, he timed him, and he caught him with a beautiful shot, beautiful performance from the amazing boy. Use aggression, his aggression against him, Dre. And Shiro. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute in round number four. Our referee in charge, Frank Garza, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the WBC light flyweight champion of the world, the amazing boy, Ken Shiro. 16-0 with nine knockouts now as the 27-year-old from Kyoto, Japan, comes to Osaka and puts on a show. These fans are hoping that that's just the beginning. Come up.